see that? Okay. Okay. Um, right. So people are talking about curl uh, this weekend. I'll be talking a little bit about curl, um, but I'm, I apologize. You're going to get a little bit of other stuff as well. Um, uh, so I work at, um, at Red Hat. I don't do AI at Red Hat, uh, but for 15 years, apparently I did do AI. But I wasn't in this kind of AI, uh, machine learning. I was in uh, knowledge graphs. Um, and uh, I like curl, use it. Um, I like evolutionary algorithms, which is AI as well, uh, and working computer security at uh, Red Hat. Um, what is AI? Well, uh, uh, like I said, right now when people say AI, they say machine learning, uh, but they don't say it. You know, they say AI. And AI is a, is a vast gamut of things. Um, Generally, uh, people, uh, uh, if you look at the poles of it, you can talk about um, meats and scruffies, uh, soft versus hard computing, uncontained versus contained, narrow or general AI. We know that general AI is not possible, um, so let's not try to do that. Um, uh, and, and really, uh, it, the time coordinate is interesting. You know, at the last place I worked at, I worked on a database, and we, uh, we implemented the query planner selector, where, da Daniel? Um, I think there's GA in, in Postgres, but you probably have to select it, right? Or is it engaged all the time? It's, it's engaged the when you default? have too many joins that you just right. pretty much can't handle. G G genetic al algorithm is AI, but it works really fast in certain situations. We we use simulated annealing, which is also a you know it's a, a algorithm for um, uh, that models the cooling down of metal and it solves a maze of problems and it happens really quick. You know, a query planner has to decide in in uh, uh, 10 milliseconds, you know, to take that plan, please. Um, ma machine learning is pretty slow in terms of, you know, I gotta go train something up and then I can use it. And then the, the models that are being used aren't really fungible or, or, you know, we're getting to this crazy situation where we're talking to 10 models and trying to aggregate their answers. And AI is, is kind of a, a strange wor world. Explainable versus unexplainable. Uh, I've worked on, um, Kasparov uh, versus IBM in 1997. I didn't work on the chess stuff. I worked on the network stuff between the chess viewer and and the and the in the game. But I did get to sit by all the, uh, the the grand chess master programmers. And I remember one thing when they told me back then. You know, one guy was like, "Jim, it doesn't matter if um, if uh, we create a machine that beats a human." What matters is uh, we create a machine that beats a human and explains to us how it beat us. Otherwise, it's just like weird programming lawyers speaking legalese and we have no idea um, what they're doing. Uh, determinate, indeterminate, yeah, we've talked about that. Uh, I guess with machine learning, we're talking about censored and uncensored. You know, it's, once you've used sense uncensored models, you kind of don't ever want to come back in terms of you know, the, the full power. And, and, and really, s censoring a model is almost impossible. That is, you're basically trying to tell an LLM, don't tell me the secret you have. Um, but you can, you can create prompts. Um, it's like talking to a toddler. You can create enough things that the toddler will eventually tell you everything. Um, right, so anyways, why am I here? Um, uh, I want to find interesting curl invokes. Uh, and we've talked about fuzzing of curl, but I'm talking about the fuzzing of curl, the, um, the command line application. Um, and problematic, well, obviously we want to cause a buffer overflow, but we also want to find other things, logic problems, uh, inefficiencies in terms of execution. Um, so if I was going to do this, um, just me, I would just agitate the flags. So I'll start typing away, and I will agitate the, the flags. Now, for this talk, um, though I am instrumenting up a version of this, um, I'm going to assume that flags don't really care about order. Yeah, but there are things that mean something when I put next flag or uh, But for this talk, we're going to assume uh, that there's no order in flags um, so I'll, why, I could do this myself. I'll just sit down. And I'll start generating the flags. I'll run the flags I'll observe the execution. Maybe I'll look at its process ID and I'll get its memory its CPU and I'll see how long it took, and I'll see if it failed or not, or or buffer overflow happened, and I'll I'll go yeah. Um, and if I find anything fishy, I'll, you know we report it. But but we got a problem here, so I I start typing away. Okay, start typing away. I could do more efficient 
searches of the space, you know, a random search. Uh, but I have to brute force 259 curl flags. Now, that's not bad. Um, I'll just go to Wolfram Alpha. It'll tell me. Uh, oh, it's, it's actually a really <laughs> big number. <laughs> actually, your computer can't calculate that number. Yeah, You have to go to Wolfram Alpha, which is doing the math for you. Um, so I'll narrow the problem down. Okay, I'll just take um, um, I'll just take 122 options. Well, if that's still an infinite amount of computing number, I could take 25 options. Actually, about 12 options. So if I take any 12 of the 274, is it options? I can test them, and maybe I could do map reduce, and I could. But you still don't get anything greater than 12. So. Um, uh, because we don't care about order, that is, if I flip things around, I can sort of make a simplification, which is, um, uh, uh, we're just talking about states. Uh, you know, if you had five switches, light switches, and turning them on and off, uh, we're just talking, uh, you know, the number of states to the power of uh, the number of switches. Um, so, oh, that's still quite big. That's 374, sorry, I don't know why I, maybe that'll be next year's uh, number of flags, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, so we, <laughs> Flags aren't just on and off, right? Flags are uh, can be uh, have discrete values, integers. Um, they can be floats. Uh, they can have obviously uh, sets of values uh, in terms of uh, I don't know cipher names and all that type of stuff. Um, I, like I said, I'm going to ignore uh, some things um, because some flags depend on other flags, and uh, I haven't quite instrumented up the co-constraint relationships and how to randomize that, but I will. Um, so even if I'm talking about 10 states, 10 to the 274 is, is still a big number. So I need an alternative to brute force. Um, I need to be clever. How do I agitate um, within a reasonable period of time and follow the trail of badness efficiently in this large space uh, to search? Um, I can use a lot of AI. There's a lot, you know, machine learning is actually really bad for this kind of problem. Um, uh, it, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's just not the right algorithm to choose. There are lots of other sort of uh, just general statistics you could approach. Um, uh, but I'm just going to blast through this because I'm looking at the time and I, I want to show more code than actual this stuff. Um, there's other AI stuff. There's evolutionary programming. There's interesting uh, algorithms that mimic the behavior of ant colony and how, how they walk around and, and how they uh, uh, solve mazes. Uh, I've talked about uh, simulated uh, 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 annealing before. Um, evolutionary computing for these kind of problems is actually quite tractable. In other words, they're easier to understand. I don't have to puzzle out too much. Um, uh, I can stop the process and restart it. I can, whilst the process is changing, I can change it without any kind, like this is like the, you know, if you look at life, um, life is a big computation happening on, and there's lots of entry points, and it's all happening in parallel async and all this stuff. And, and this is actually a really good at scale approach for a lot of problems, uh, big problems. So that's why, um, and I, I've been doing this stuff for a while. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say, I'm, oops, let me just, do I still have, let's see what this goes to. Even. I, I usually use org mode for most of my presentations. I don't know why I decided to leave that, that approach. So, okay. so, so if we go to this actually in, I think this was in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2002, I did this. Um, so I did, uh, I've, I've actually done genetic algorithm stuff in, in the 90s as well. And it's always sort of a thing I apply uh, to anything I'm doing at the day. So I did the same thing, Daniel, by the way, with Postgres configurations. <coughs> to find, uh, but I reversed the algorithm. Instead of fuzzing, I went to optimize. Um, uh, so I might release that at, at some point. But anyways. All right, am I really boring people yet? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I'm not so, asleep yet. Okay, great, great. I'll look for, for closing eyelids. Uh, so let's re refresh ourselves about the uh, genetic algorithm. Basically, um, you have a set of operations, reproduction. Reproduction in, in the sense of GA is actually cloning. I've taken an individual and he's going, you know, there's, there's a population of, of, of things happening. Population zero has a set of individuals 
and now I'm going to go. There's an algebraic set of uh, uh, operations uh, and behaviors, and reproduction is cloning. Crossover is you know, parents are making babies. Uh, mutation, one uh, of the babies or one of the individuals has changed in a random way. And then there's other stuff. And I'm not. Th these these are sort of second order. The permutation, uh, editing, encapsulation, and decimation. They're, they're not really relevant. They are relevant, but not for this um, uh, discussion. So let's take, uh, we take uh, two, what, what are curl configurations? Uh, these two things on the left hand side are two curl invokes with a set of flags. Totally different. And when I take them, I'm going to take them out and say, right, you two are going to make babies. And basically I'm going <coughs> to intermix their flags. So the, the resulting curl invoke will have a mixture of flags from this and that one and and, and that's how we, we generate generations. So if we look at the uh, uh, parent number one and parent number two, um, uh, they would, um, well, make, make babies, and you would have a flag come from one parent, parent one in this case, flag come from parent two, yes. Uh, and then you would have maybe uh, the same flag is existing in both invokes, yeah? So that can happen. Uh, I get some more from parent one. And then randomly, a mutation happens. Uh, and you get a flag just uh, spontaneously appearing, like it does with our DNA. Uh, right. So, I haven't talked about, well, you know, it's not all happy babies. Sometimes some babies, well, they die. <laughs> um, and that's because they're not fit for purpose. But I'm sorry to say when they're first born, curl babies either are fit for purpose. In our case, we might say fitness is, uh, do you actually do anything? You know, do you actually, are you just, are you, do you return an error code that is not zero? Or do you return it? You, you, you don't make any sense. Maybe you don't go on to the next generation. And actually, we don't need to have one fitness factor. We can have a, a couple of fitness factors to assess in a Darwinian sense. Uh, why do you move forward to the next generation? Um, so we choose a lot of, uh, we make a lot of babies. Um, we, we generate a new generation. Some unfortunately don't make it to the next generation. And in that way, we have evolution, or evolutions, as, um, as someone likes to call it. <laughs> um, New work. <laughs> so if this is a circle. Select curl config, run curl invoke, determine fitness, apply a genetic operation, plus one, plus one, iterate until not done, because GA is never done. It's, we stop and look, and then it restarts again. Right, so let's uh, repose the problem. How can we use AI? Because ge the genetic algorithm is AI, and you guys wanted to be bored by machine learning, but I wasn't going to inflict that on you on a Saturday. Um, uh, and, uh, and we're going to use uh, the evolutionary program to search this particular problem space. Why would, like I said, a lot of people use GA for in the reverse. In other words, I want to make things faster, fitter. That, 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 um, and uh, we're doing the inverse of that. I actually want to find curl invocations that are unfit, very slow, use a lot of memory. That, 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 that. Um, and why do we want to do this? Well, obviously we want to find buffer overflows. And I'll, I'll give you a, a TLDR. I'm not going to show any buffer overflows today. You know, this is still a work in progress. Haven't, it's not that I haven't found anything, but I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are other things, there are bugs. You know, uh, I think I found a couple of uh, minor bugs and all that type of stuff. There are some things that cause performance issues for you know, just logical problems. Um, right, some girl, curl golf. Can any of you tell me what this does? Um, oh, I've got, I just, uh, I've just probably not. So anyways, this is kind of the output of the babies. You, you get craziness happening. Um, and, and we can run this, actually. I'll, I'll, let me just uh, run this, and we'll see if it's a anything surprising from, from running this. Now, obviously, uh, there's some assumptions happening here. We have uh, things running. I have a server's running. Um, and maybe I'll use the whiteboard to uh, explain. Legit and I'll explain the process, but anyways, we'll, just for fun, for the curl golf aspect, we'll run this, and maybe we'll run time with it as well. So it's doing something. I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. Uh-huh. Tried 0, 0, 0, 0, 
is that? <laughs> and now it's just kick the line. It's probably hit, it's it's hit a timeout probably and we're gonna we'll fall over after fifty uh, after sixty seconds or yeah. So one of the problems with fuzzing is that I want to find um, slow things and bad things. So as I get better and better and better, my process runs slower and slower and slower. So it takes a long time when you're successful. Um, uh, uh, so I've done some things with the code to parallelize things, which may obfuscate what I show you. Um, anyways, it keeps on going yeah, quite happily. Uh, yep. It is keep alive, so there's that TCP timeout, and you didn't specify timeout. Why is it talking to point A? It's like yeah. to keep alive. Could be. Uh, Right, are we gonna it should stop right now if it's the timeout. Uh, now. Oh. The new game was invented. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's, what is happening. So I, I find a lot of I think it's waiting for, uh, for an input. Yeah. On Probably. On standard yeah. Yeah. Because you have yeah. selected a pen. Maybe what I can ah, do is rerun this with a V and make it a little bit more. Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, so <laughs> so Barbosa's so already there. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is fun because I find lots of these things, and actually, I call it curl golf because it's like, what is this doing? Why is it doing that? And actually, if you look, the lib curl doesn't have any temp. Oh, it doesn't have any out here. So lib curl is probably taking this mess yes. uh, as an input. And there's oh, stuff right, that, and that's the number one. That's the IP address, and that's the URL. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's oh, why it goes exactly. Through. And this is the great <laughs> thing about fuzzing, is it, it, it gives you great curl golf. I think we could have like a, we should probably have like a pub quiz of curl exactly golf. Exactly. No. <laughs> and, and I'll win. <laughs> You'll be practicing. Yes, yes. Right. Anyway, so, um, so this is why I, I, I think it's fun because, um, um, uh, you know, we can, we can demonstrate code. Yeah, so we're just, any, any questions at this point? Anything? Right, so I'm going to show you. I won't show you in Emacs. Uh, uh, I'll show you in. Um, I have one messy Python file. And by the way, this is not pretty. This is sort of like not even lovingly handcrafted code. This is just <coughs> working a workbench of code. Imagine my workbench in my garage, and it's got crap all over it. And I've been uh, doing all this. This is what this code is. Yeah. Um, and and basically. I want to play with this until I, I sort of make it a bit more, not professional, but um, uh, I want to define the parameters first. Right, so if we look here, I'm using Python. You can use lots of different things. Uh, Python has a lot of packages for, um, uh, uh, you know, using stuff like um, GA, and the deep package is got a whole bunch of algorithms, not just genetic algorithms, but a whole bunch of stuff that you can, you can play with in terms of, um, not having I implementing genetic algorithms is actually pretty simple, but um, implementing all of the other stuff that you'll need when you're doing uh, genetic operations, um, uh, it's just good to, to inherit this stuff. Uh, right, so I set up some logging. Uh, the thing is, is that for every curl invocation, I want to test it against not just one server, but a couple, because I might be generating a FTP call, I might be generating uh, an HTTP one call, I might be generating. Uh, I might want to test against N Nginx or, I don't know, Caddy or whatever. So I, at the moment, I've just had it, I, I'm just having it go against, Eng I believe 8080 is Nginx at the moment. Um, but I'll, I will enable a bit more, and, and this gives me a, a range. Uh, but remember, every time we do a test, we're going to run it against all of those. The more I have, the, the slower it'll be. Uh, right, we'll, we'll skip over config values. Config parameters are just flags themselves. Yeah, so all SVC, uh, any auth, um, and and each one of the flags has a type. I once again, when this becomes more professional, I'll make this prettier. Um, the zero and ten, which is the same for all of them, is about probability. I want to be able to select things. Um, right at the moment, zero and ten means all of them have the same random probability of being selected. Um, but some flags I might want to depress or make higher yeah and that th that 0 and 10 would allow me to uh, change its uh, selection probability a little bit uh, a flag is a flag is a flag a value is a value so um, if you take um, I don't know cert type there'll be you know a set a value and there's another um, uh, dictionary here that will probably have cert type somewhere and it'll list out 
Um, and these these uh, dictionaries I'm auto generating from the code base somehow, um, or from the Markdown document. Can't quite remember. Um, I've I'm also um, uh, some of these are commented out for a reason. Um, as I play, um, sometimes getting the full <laughs> ball of flags is just a little too much for me to comprehend at the moment. Um, so as I learn stuff, um, I, I find classes of errors, and uh, then I fix the, the, the workbench to just avoid this nonsense error because I, I'm not interested in it anymore. Um, connect timeout is an interesting one, or um, connect at is an interesting one in terms of, uh, or connect to, you know, uh, all sorts of fun stuff can happen there. Anyway, so I have a set of flags. It's not all 274 flags, but it is a pretty good um, subset and larger than 12. Uh, and my goal is to have them all, uh, and, and my goal is also to have the values represented as well. Um, I also want different values in terms of, curl is pretty good at like, you know, put in a thousand headers or put in bad value for any of these things. It pretty much well has, does the right thing, yeah? Uh, but I do want to get more sophisticated in dynamic and testing this um, a little bit more. So it's not just about the, uh, the um, sort of static values um, being defined here. It's also about there might be um, some dynamic code generating some things, you know, like weird UTF or you know, all sorts of stuff. Right, so the first thing, we'll just jump down to the bottom of the code. We'll go in reverse. Um, I want to run, uh, let's say, a population, you know, my tribe will consist of 100 curl invokes, and I want to run it for 10 generations. Uh, and the seven here means 70% uh, crossover. That means every generation there's a 70% probability of a baby being born. And 22% is the mutation factor. So um, every, anytime um, I look at an individual from a generation, there's a relatively high chance of mutation. You know? Uh, and I'm just going to start running this because then we'll go through the code. Does that make sense or do you want to go through the code first? Yeah, code first? Yeah? Just a random thought that I had. Have you ever implemented something like sexual attraction between? The, the <laughs> actually, <laughs> you, 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 I generated a buffer overflow, so that one's now more attractive. Oh, yeah, that's what, that's what fitness is. Oh, fitness okay, is the, the representation of attraction. Um, now, um, buffer overflows are pretty, uh, like, uh, it's sort of like the drop dead, you're, no, everyone is in love with them in this program, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and not subtle at all, it's like everything is broken, and in Python, well, cap trapping a, a buffer overflow means your, your program is, has crashed, but, um, uh, and there, there's ways in Python to trap a buffer overflow and keep on running. Um, uh, uh, but to me, it's sort of like the big bell, ding, 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 you know, like, a, everything, like, uh, like, other uh, uh, attraction is uh, I run really slowly. Isn't isn't that sexy? Um, uh, uh, I I've used a thousand headers. You know, well, well that's pretty interesting. You know, why have you done that? Um, uh, I use uh, I have my request is really large. Oh, that's that's good too. So yes, th and we have multiple fitness factors. And once again, in a Darwinian sense, we think of fitness uh, to get better, but we're doing the inverse of that. Like, not fis not fitness factors, you know. So if we look at the entry point into this function, it just sets up a bunch of um, deep things, um, and those aren't very interesting except for this. And this will become more interesting uh, when I describe something later on. So we're just gonna uh, gloss over the weights. Um, I want this to be a little bit more efficient. I want to run. Each one of these curl invokes in parallel, so I have to uh, map this um, using multi-processing pool. Um, I have to define the uh, definition of an individual. An individual is a single curl in invoked. Um, and then I have to uh, set up uh, the mutate function. Now, in deep, you have lots of different approaches to mutation. And uh, maybe I can show different, different ones that are better, you know, better forms of mutation. Uh, uh, or more appropriate for our problem. And uh, how do we select uh, parents for mating? You know, there's a lots of different um, statistics for, for doing that. And this just basically sets up the, uh, the GA algorithm. And I just plug all those in, and then we, we run away. Uh, and so let's just run the code, and then we're going to go a little bit deeper into um, 
what that means in a kernel sense. Uh, right, so that's running now, and that's now generating. Uh, oh, gosh, that was very fast. Uh, so only 100, uh, ten, let's run at 100 generate. Uh, we'll go for 100 generations. Um, so that's running now. And if we look at any one of these, you'll see a curl invoke in there. Um, in fact, we can just stop this right now. Um, and if we look here, we have one curl invoke, and it's given us a warning. Um, oh yeah, that'll be fun. So let's run this. Okay, what's going? Can everyone see that? Actually, is that big enough? Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. So that's hitting localhost eighty eighty. So that's nginx. Oh, it's got probably the cipher list flag somewhere. Oh, it's a build. It's an engine list. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, engine. Yeah. And if we run uh, this, I wonder if it thinks this is good because it's slow. Maybe might be inefficient. Um, yeah. It uses a bit of CPU for reasons unknown. Um, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, that that uh, uh, if we go back here, this is just a list of invokes, and as time goes on, I'm generating um, uh, populations that go into each generation. And the idea is the last one will be um, really bad, but that doesn't mean we won't find bad ones during the whole run. So I'm gonna let it run. It shouldn't run that long. Um, and uh, once again, I'm only running against one server now, so it should be fairly quick. Uh, and it should give me an overview of the run, like this generation, this generation has had this many. Um, and each, um, you'll see each one, and we'll take the last one here, you'll see that I list out a few things. Uh, uh, the data that returned from this invoke, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm writing out all the JSON here, yeah? So I'm getting all the goodness that Daniel has done in terms of uh, total time and time and things I can use as fitness factors. Yeah. And it's giving me the return code. I'm using process to find CPU percentage and mem percentage. Obviously I get total time of this from, from, uh, from curl itself. I also get size headers and size requests and number of headers. Um, so if we go and run this one, take a look. Time. Uh, all right. So sixteen hundred percent. Yeah, I don't know why it, it thinks. Um, uh, uh, let's take a look here. Oh yeah, it's probably making mistakes. So it just takes up time. So once again, this is where the workbench aspect to it. You have to interpret these results. It might be totally um, valid that it's this bad or this slow because it's being asked to do stupid things, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, or it might be trying one thing and going to another thing, and, <coughs> and, uh, and in, in this case, I think I have a refer flag, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, one moment. Uh, yeah, I have a, this? I have a refer flag, yeah. Anyways. So, um, if we go through the, the generations, we've had on gener generation one, we had 100. Um, 75 uh, uh, w participated in mating uh, in the first generation, then 71, 74, it should hover around those values. Uh, and uh, by the 100th hundred, hundred generation, we ended off with 81. And I've asked to give me the top, top three of those 81, um, which in theory should be bad, uh, but that doesn't mean bad. I'm gonna have to run this thing for thousands of generations to find the, the, you know, the really bad stuff. And, well, I don't know what this one's doing, but no browser, more Perl golf, I think. I don't think it's particularly bad. Um, so let's, let's, let's make things a little bit more complicated now. Um, being bad uh, might just be the fact that I'm only testing against um, one server. So I, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, make it a little bit wider. I'm going to test against FTP, HTTP, and, um, and maybe I uh, will change some 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 parameters here. Uh, uh, let's go to 0.75 and let's reduce the number of, and I can use the genetic algorithm to find the best set of parameters as well. You know, I can use the GA to, to run the GA to find um, a good set of um, uh, algorithms. Okay, that's gonna run now. Looking at the time, I'm just gonna, after this run, we'll be done. Okay, 
and you can go blind. And we'll just chuckle at the, the Krill Golf that comes out of this one. It looks like it's getting a little bit slower, and it's, I can hear my computer is working a little bit now. Uh, it may have chewed onto something. Um, so this kind of fuzzing Maybe is different than all the other fuzzing that we're doing with... Uh, uh, I don't think OSS, fu <laughs> OSS fuzz is completely lower level in terms of um, uh, permutating through the code itself and invoking the code entry points. Of my bucks. This is really an end-to-end -end at the end at with, with curl the command line application. Um, but, well, it's gotten slower, which means it's probably found something interesting. So I'm just going to stop it. And this is the great thing about GA is I, if I stop at any point, as time goes on, I've got less fit individuals, so this is a nice sampling, you know, and I can restart it if I if I want without um, worrying. Oh, that's a interesting look. Uh, so yeah, if, uh, I, I mean, this is another thing, is I, I might be using a version of curl uh, that um, is old or different or doesn't support stuff, so let's take a look at... Hey, you showed a deprecated option there. Nice yeah, it did. <laughs> that, that, that's good, that's good. Um, so, but uh, let me... See, yeah, I'm using a built. I I built this curl, um, so it's actually um, pretty good. Um, if I if I, I I've actually built some of some older versions of curl, and we found quite quite a lot of interesting things. Um, uh, I don't think we need to report bugs in the past on past uh, things that have nothing to do. So, yeah, right. So I've run over time as per usual. Um, so, genetic algorithms are powerful. Um, they can be, uh, you know, you don't have to, in, in, with neural networks, you don't have this sort of weird in-between internal layers that don't mean anything to human beings. Um, you know, you can stop at any time and look at a curl invoke and it means something to you, not into some weird internal uh, uh, machine uh, language. Like I said, it's easy to start, stop, it's easy to change. Um, and I've talked about, you can run fuzzing in reverse, which is um, uh, for optimal. Next steps is I'll continue instrumenting up um, more dynamic mo values. I want to test many different build configurations uh, whilst I'm permutating the space because it's not just about what any one particular ver uh, version of curl um, uh, that you want to. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably at some point during this conference reveal some some findings. Yes, uh, but uh, uh, it won't be t uh, today. So thank you very much. That's it. Any questions? Stand up for this. Uh, yeah. Can you show a few examples of things you have found and fixed in Crow? Uh, yeah, I can do a few. Moments. Yeah, so, so I, I've got a few findings. Uh, so let's say you use IPv4 and IPv6 at the same time flags. What happens? I'm using you as a curl. I would imagine that, I, that, the, that the later one overrides the first one. Yeah, um, it's, it's sort of indeterminate what happens. It could probably be thought about a little bit, you know. Um, uh, or you know, with our new con connection filters, we probably have a more consistent approach. You know, I don't know. Um, uh, and I found like stuff like Keep Alive. Like, well, you know, you you already answered some questions. Some documentation, like we don't have, um, we have uh, the no versions of uh, all our flags. So no, um, yeah, but we actually don't. We, you know, yeah. it's not consistent. We have, we d we we d we have some no versions for for some of the flags. Yeah, but because it's uh, it's not visible if they're a boolean or or just a switch. Right, right. So 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 the booleans have no as a prefix. But like for example, HTTP one is not a boolean, weirdly enough. Yeah. But it's it's a more of a selector, and then we have multiple selectors for different HTTP versions, for example. Mm -hmm. So you can't do there's no opposite to HTTP one. And once again, fuzzing is really good at teasing out logic. Like it might be the right logic, or it might not. You know, uh, I'm not saying it, but it's it's 
it's not it wasn't very obvious to me. no it's not obvious and it's more like uh, one uh, another one of those things that just yeah they ended up like this <laughs> maybe we should have done it differently uh, 20 years ago but we didn't right right and i've got um uh, before i go any further i, I kind of don't want it to be an open forum in terms of uh, uh showing stuff but i have uh, uh no Buffer overflows is all I'll say at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, but I, I'll be you know this is a work in progress. I'll be adding more to this, and at some point I'll have a you know blog or article or some output. Um, oh. yeah. Any more questions? Um, can, can you so, so you say you can start and stop it right? Right. right. So I, w I, w I was just thinking. So I mean if. Ideally, or, or really, it could sort of benefit them from running a long time or continuing again and again and again, right? So I was, I was just thinking how it could be used in like a CI job or something. But continuing on from the previous and not just restarting every time. Yeah, I, I, mean, uh, I mean, in terms of start and stop, the execution can stop. Uh, but we can still have the um, you know the information from the execution right, so that's persisted somewhere and keep the state somewhere yeah and then um, uh, and just restart it you know and it'll, it'll be fine if we if we have a constant CI job um, running uh, the fuzzer uh, that's good when you have new code coming in new flags and that will flow into uh, into the, the the test and I think what uh, there's probably a a nice thing to add in libcurl to emit um, the options in a in a easy to use uh, you know external form. Um, at the moment, I'm 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 sort of scraping the options from Markdown. Um, yeah, I'm thinking of just adding a function to pull them out. And also, I don't know if I should do this on curl. Well, you know, maybe in the CI thing, we're actually just using libcurl and running it at that level instead of against um, curl command, but I don't know. Yeah. The, um, both are interesting, right? Because I know that when, when uh, Trailer Bits, they added a fuzzer for the command line. Uh, mm -hmm. And they found problems mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we have not done that before. So well there's certainly, because there's a bunch of logic existing in the curl tool that isn't in the library, so you, a different set of Issues. I think it's probably more value on the command line at the moment. Um, definitely. Uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, like, I'd like to add this function once again so I can get at any new options that, 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 that get added. Um, I want to get a set of builds, and I'm not quite certain what they'll be, what they should be. Um, th that would be, a, a, you know, I don't want to turn on everything and have one build. I, I kind of want to have. Maybe the Debian and the you know, maybe I'll just take distro releases, maybe right. maybe that, maybe that's a good way to do it, um, and and ju and and just look at there. Um, uh, any advice would be so we can maybe use. Uh, and then we could easily set up as a CI job. We actually do this. You know, I do this technique in, in Red Hat now, so and we run that as CI jobs um, constantly. But not with this code. This is very messy, crazy code. But have you have you have you? So if you you, you mentioned you're still gonna write something about this for curl. Have you wrote about this technique in general before somewhere like a blog post? I have it? actually, probably. Uh, I don't know if it's still up. Um, maybe it was about ten or fifteen years ago. So I'd have to find if I still have it. Um, yeah. But I'll put this stuff on in a GitHub repo, and, and I'll probably write something with it there, yeah. Yeah, so next steps, I plan to continue instrumenting things up. Um, I wanna have a few different builds. Um, I don't know if Nginx is the right test server. Um, you know, it might be Caddy's better, I don't really know, or Apache, I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, you know. I don't wanna test the servers. Right, know, exactly. Yeah. In this case, I figured a, a specific server doesn't matter much. Yeah. I mean, it, it is interesting to get point nine, you know, <laughs> testing on, uh, you know, it, it, you know. I, I think uh, uh, what's the highest value is generating invokes that no human being, you know, would ever pathologically create any of these. You know what I mean? And it kind of, 
you know, uh, uh, I don't want just perfect invokes. I also want the like the bad invoke with the lib curl with no um, no no file. You know what I mean? I want to do all yeah. of those variations. Right. That's where the interesting stuff happens. And that's why they w when they found problems with the fuzzy, right? Like right. sort of entering like uh, weird uh, characters mm -hmm. as file mm -hmm. names yeah. or blank uh, arguments or. Something. And I've got like dictionaries of this bad stuff that you know I can use um, for you know for pouring in. So I'm not quite there um, with with instrument instrumenting up yet. Uh, but yeah, next steps is that, and then the goal will be to have something running automatically. Be it in its own project or at Red Hat or you know, of course we uh, you know we, we run quite a, a stately version of curl um, at Red Hat, so um, that's another battle. Um, right. right, and and an option is also to do it more like OSS fuzz style, right? More or less constantly, just updating every now and then, and just keep running and running and running and figure out reports if there's anything to report while running. Yeah, we could do that. I uh, mean, it, it depends on what's most convenient, right? And what works best. I mean, I, I think if you, like, end-to-end uh, -end tests are good because things are changing in the code that probably warrants that. We're not adding so many options every week that right. they, we need to test them <laughs> uh, like at uh, that constant level. Uh, it, fuzzy as a regression test is kind of weird. Like, it is a regression test for us in curl. We, we catch stuff all the time before we yeah. put it into uh, you know it's like oh why would oh that okay it's a, but it's a tiny little you know sort of picky thing um, in this case I'm not sort of uh, uh, I think there's a sort of a, a like just like with the original uh, testers the like trailer bits was doing the code I think there's an initial sort of um, shock to to command line curl to find uh, and uh, I I'm surprised I haven't found anything yet uh, in terms of a pure buffer overflow. You know, and I've done probably half a million generations. So you, we should be really proud that latest curl is pretty safe. Yeah. yeah. And I think it'll be really hard to find something. But I have found some weird stuff that I haven't had the time to parse and understand what it's doing. It might be doing you know, perfectly. No, but, but you're, I think you're, you might find many things. Because as you say, this test stuff that no human would test. Mm -hmm. so, so possibly, you know, IPv4, IPv6. Well, yeah, sh just gaps in logic. Exactly. Right? Well, what's the correct way to? Yeah, yeah, we haven't yeah. really thought about that probably right. because no one is actually doing that. But mm -hmm. sure, it might needs attention and maybe a decision to maybe I'll put a warning. You shouldn't mm -hmm. select both. What does it mean? There was a there was a recent CV that was something similar to that, wasn't it? Where you were trying to disable disable some protocols and you ended up with all of them enabled. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. The proto option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dan's find it. You got a van for that, right? Exactly. Yeah. Got a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the beginning off. of a minivan. <laughs> Yeah, and b now it's coffee time before they rip away our whatever it is. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>